guys, Larry here. Uh, late edition of Vlog Simber, day number 10. Uh, due to the fact that I had work, woke up late, kids, all of that nonsense. But still bringing you um, a video a day till we get to the 31st. And then we'll go back. I'll go back to my normal posting of once to twice a week on YouTube. Um, but today, I wanted to talk about programming. Uh, when it comes to programming, a lot of the things that people think is that it has to be complicated. You have to do all of this fancy stuff when it's really programming for basic muscle building workouts. To be quite honest with you, is not that difficult. What I like to do is I like to put a lot of people through the ringer but I also like to save them from themselves. So when I am programming, not only for other people, but also for myself, I put my mind in the position of what can I do to damage the muscle the most without fucking myself up the most. So there's a couple of things that I that I've dubbed programming tools that you guys can use. So when you're designing your stuff, these are things that you can adhere to or use um, to make your workouts better. So the first thing I want to start out with is movement excellence. So what is movement excellence? Full range of motion, the bracing, etc. Right? Having good mobility, all of that. So that requires you to do things that are outside of the scope of the actual weight training portion of the workout. So. Uh, on IG, Squat University does a lot of good mobility stuff for anything related to the squat. Um, you know, it's always good to look at Joe DeFranco stuff because like a lot of 40 plus people, he's been injured, he's hurt, he's a meathead. So it's good to look at a lot of his stuff. And for bodybuilding, you really don't have to have a lot of a ton of mobility. But what you need to be able to do is that you need to be able to get into those deep stretch positions where you're stretched under a low, like the hack squat, for example, the pendulum squat, things of that nature, where you have the ability and the mobility to get down into that deep position where it's almost ass to ankles, and then you're able to pop back up. So you have to have the mobility to be able to do that. So where does movement excellence come in? Every rep should look the same even if your reps start to become grinder reps like reps that move really really slow at a particular part of the movement all right and when you get to that really difficult part of the movement this is where this comes in you have to be able to brace yourself and be able to push through very hard to finish the movement off okay um you know, when you're, when you're talking about movement excellence, you're talking about keeping good alignment and working through the range of motion. Again, that's full, but also comfortable for you. And on top of that, hits the muscle in a maximal capacity. So I'm going to bring this, I'm going to bring this example up. I know it's a, it'll probably be a miss a lot. It's a, it's a bad example for me. Um, branch warm, right? Let's just say that Branch Warren is an absolute freak, but the range of motion that he uses while maybe suboptimal for other people or suboptimal for their standards for what he's trying to do, I mean, he's not wrong. You know, even Mike Van Wick, who I, I think is a great resource as far as movement quality, uh, he says it works for him. He works through a decent range of motion where the muscle will eventually catch. Um, so please keep that in mind that 90% of us are not branch worn. Okay, so with that being said, work through a full range of motion, nothing herky, nucky, nothing jerky, control the movement, tempo, adhere to movement excellence, okay? And that includes your warm-up sets. So a lot of people have a tendency to fuck around on warm-up sets. I'm asking you not to fuck around. Okay. Next thing is movement selection. <sighs> movement selection, I'm finding in my older age, and I'm finding for a lot of people, 
a lot of it is not results based but a lot of it is emotion based what do I mean by emotion based movement selection an incline barbell press could work much worse than an incline dumbbell press for you and an incline dumbbell press could work much worse than a hammer strength incline press the problem is is that you probably think that the incline barbell press is more manlier than the incline dumbbell press and you probably think the hammer strength incline is a cop-out or being a pussy to the dumbbell incline the thing with movement selection is that you have to do the movements that a are enjoyable for you that, that you feel like you can progress on two something that you can adhere movement excellence to right and then number three something that you can progress on safely without majorly wrecking your joints that doesn't always have to involve a barbell I enjoy the squat I, I actually like squatting for the most part when I feel up to it it's not something that I do frequently because even though I work through full range even though I do pretty good bracing it beats me to shit and it doesn't hit my quads the way that I want so the movement selection when I'm putting together a leg workout for me or for anybody else that may not be that great at squatting I will put in a, guat, a guided squat Smith machine squat where they can stay upright hit their quads a little bit more most certainly a hack squat and then a leg press where they're putting their foot on the on the metal part where they push I forgot what it's called a uh, platform I'm doing that where they're biasing the quads so I'm putting their foot at a particular particular place on the platform where they can bias the quads but movement selection oftentimes is rooted in ego and that's not good and I'm saying that from experience I did not enjoy dropping the incline barbell press my shoulders enjoy me dropping the incline barbell press. Before I was incline barbell pressing, my, my soul said if I didn't flat bench, I was a punk. My shoulders thank me for dropping the flat bench barbell press. Um, now that's not to say you can't do certain movements that you like to do, but what I would recommend is that you pick exercises before the particular exercise that you want to do so your muscle goes into a fatigued state for example next week I'll be doing incline barbell presses however they will be my third exercise so I don't have to put more than 225 235 on the bar because again it all comes down to movement excellence working through a full range of motion make sure that the muscle is getting hit I can do that with lighter weight. If I can get the same result that I want with having lighter weight on the bar and not damaging my joints, keeping joint integrity over a span of time, then that's what I'm gonna go for. That's what you should go for. Because once your joints get wrecked in this thing we call bodybuilding, and this thing we call powerlifting, you may as well retire. Because that's it. Joint integrity is of the utmost importance. So if I can get something out of lighter weight, I'm going to use it. So. Movement selection is key. Bodybuilding, do not be afraid to use machines. They should not make up the bulk of your workout, just like free weights shouldn't make up the bulk of your workout. It's literally these days, 50-50, because I see a lot more isolation stuff than I do compound stuff. And that's, that's probably pretty good, especially as you progress in your development and your age. I tell people, pick movements that you can brace against and not necessarily for. I have to brace everything for an incline barbell press. I don't really have to brace that hard for a hammer strength incline press. If you understand what I'm saying, any type of free weight movement, you'll have to do a lot more to get tight, get set up, brace a lot more. And yes, you'll have a very different appearance on stage, or walking around in a tight t-shirt but at what cost so I'm going to employ you implore you at some point 
you will have to imbalance that 50-50 a bit. Sometimes it's going to be 75-25. Some by the times it's going to be 90-10. But balance it out somehow. All right. Keep in mind your training age and your actual age. Fourth or the third point, everybody's favorite is load. This is all I really have to say on load. Get stronger over a period of rep ranges over the span of time and try to progress and rotate exercises. Um, dog crap, DC training was uh, a very good thing at emphasizing that. Jordan Peters also emphasizes this. This is something that I've been doing rather instinctively for the most part. Uh, in my 20s, early 30s, I was a very low rep guy, especially being in the powerlifting sphere. But now, not so much. So I pick load that will allow me to work through a full range of motion, that will allow me to progress, and that when I pick the weight up off the floor, does not destroy me. Doesn't leave me out of breath simply just picking it up, right? So load is a variable. It's a very good variable to control. Do not let it control you, all right? That's all I'm gonna say on that. Fourth point goes into the first point. Reinforcement of proper technique. As you get stronger, you're going to want to put on more weight. It's a matter of fact. I don't care who debates me on this. When you get stronger, you think that strength is infinite. So you add more weight. But with that addition of more weight, we start twisting, we start turning, other muscle groups come into play. Guys, don't forget. Reinforcement of proper technique, okay? Again, joint integrity, movement excellence. We want those in play when we're increasing the load, all right? Your joints have to be, handled, be able to handle the increased load that you're putting upon it. So understand that even if you get stronger, your reinforcement of proper technique is absolutely of utmost importance. So. Proper form, proper form, proper form. If I sound like a broken record, I am. Technique, technique, technique. Eddie Cohn always tells people, proper technique is the foundation for everything that you do on the platform. And I'm gonna agree with him. Not just because he's from Chicago, but because he's the GOAT in powerlifting. And he's absolutely right. Okay, fun part right here in the last part. And this is not an all exhaustive list, guys, please. Don't get all your panties in a bunch. This is just some of the stuff that I rattled off in my mind as I'm putting together newscasts. Um, intensity techniques, all right? So as you're getting stronger and stronger and stronger, at some point, that is going to not yield as many results. So then what do we do? We add in some intensity techniques to raise up the, the Raise up the fire in your workout, so to speak. We'll turn that stove on a little bit. Drop sets, super sets, cluster sets, giant sets. Here's the thing about drop sets. I think when you get into a calorie deficit, the more that you do drop sets, like, yeah, you'll probably burn a minuscule amount of more calories, but you won't keep that thickness in the muscle that's there. So I only like to use this sparingly in the off season. So just because I'm marking it off doesn't really matter. Um, supersets, they're great. Um, what I try to tell people to do is that you need to pick one compound movement, one machine movement in that superset. The compound movement needs to be low rep. The barbell, uh, the machine movement needs to be of a higher rep. Um, so if you're going to do it like that, great. That's how I do it, uh, but I like to do opposing body parts so oftentimes I don't do that I try to match rep each so if I'm doing 10 on chest I'll do 10 for back something like that so we'll get rid of this uh, giant sets similar to supersets I don't really use them I'm not in, in the facility at the time where they're advantageous to me but they are an option three four five exercises in a row different tempos different weight selections Okay, 
not an expert on giant sets. Um, but what I will say is look at how Milo Sarsev constructs his. Uh, look at some of Charles Poliquin's stuff, Kilo Strength Society. Those are good resources that you can go to, um, that I've gone to, uh, that I've read about that help me as far as putting together a giant set program. All right, especially Charles Pollock and Milo, so you may want to look them up. Right now, my favorite stuff is cluster sets. It puts a tremendous amount of strain under the muscle without killing you because I'll do a couple of main sets, a couple of high heavy work sets, and then I'll peel off the weight, and then I'll do some cluster sets. Usually it's around about six sets of four. Sometimes it's FST7, which, you know, is kind of a form of cluster training, right? With, with a lot more extended rest periods. So cluster sets are great. They really volumize the muscle. They really push the muscle to failure. And it's something that I try to put in for every one of my clients, including myself. I think you can get stronger over time, especially if the cluster sets are emphasized to lower rep ranges, like there's a 5-1-1-1-1 cluster, there's a 3-1-1 cluster, you know, stuff like that. And there's just a 1-1-1-1-1 cluster after you do um, your heavy set. So that's something to, something to think about. So these are all of the tools, all of the things that I think about when I'm putting together a program and that you should think about when you're putting together a program. By, again, by no means is this an exhaustive list. It's not an exhaustive list. But it's things that I think about. It's things that I put in when people come to me and say, hey, construct me a workout. Are we going to adhere to movement excellence? What is the movement selection? What do you like to do? And whatever you like to do, I can construct around that. We're going to get stronger over time. And as we get stronger, we're going to reinforce proper technique. And once we got all these down, which doesn't take a whole lot of time if you're experienced, then we'll get into the fun and into the weeds even deeper of muscle building. So guys, that's vlog that's October number 10. I'm gonna get back to work now, but this is this is something that have really, that's been on my mind literally for the past two days, even while I was watching Wakanda Forever yesterday. So guys, please uh, keep these in mind when you're putting together workout programs or when you're even borrowing ideas that these things you should be thinking about when you're putting together a program all right more coming tomorrow we're going to look into my gym bag and i'm going to show you what i bring to the gym what you should probably consider and you know we'll even look at some bag we'll even look at the bag that i like and we'll look at some bag recommendations that i'm going to give to you all right but until then please like and subscribe to the channel Really hope that you guys are using the content that I'm putting out. I'm really dedicated to putting out a video today, a video a day all month so you can get something from it. Uh, but until then, y'all have a wonderful night. Eat some good food. Be with your family. Stay in. It's cold out. Y'all have a wonderful evening.